It's a bountiful day in this hollow world. A beautiful day for a hybrid. Do they shift shape? Boy, I feel great. Won't you be my cousin? Oh, shit, y'all. Welcome to the most important meal of the day. Shrimp for breakfast! <laughs> Happy Monday morning to you, citizens of Hologram Multiverse Earth and beyond. All citizens of the infinite multiverse, we salute you. We are all the same thing, y'all. Let's go! I'm feeling a lot better that it's the last day of September. We are saying goodbye to the month of September. It was turned out to be more challenging than anticipated, but we love it because that's what the stuff of life is. Unexpected challenges. But let's not get ahead of ourselves today on this beautiful Monday morning, this foggy fall morning where the foliage is popping in the northeast kingdom of vermont we've got to get down to business here with our strong black cup of coffee y'all let's get a sip <sighs> oh that is what we need this morning isn't it Mm, a life without coffee would be tough, y'all, and something else that I would never want to live without. Those dank homegrown greens up in the packs three. Keeping it easy on the lungs, y'all. Keeping it heavy on the brain. Going absolutely creatively insane. We are in peak flow state. Got back up and running last week, I think. Up till last week in the month of September, I had got maybe two or three days of work done because of all the insane stuff that was going on. Got the eye poke. My grandma had the heart attack. We drove down to see her. Thankfully, she's okay. The car died coming back. The car's completely totaled. Got COVID was knocked on our ass with this fucking flu. Ha While we were in the midst of it, had to go car shopping to get a new car, could barely think straight. Oh my God. One thing after another, but here we are at the end. I got a couple days worth of work done and all that mainly, but then last week came along and we had to go deal with our broken down car that Monday. But after that, I was able to get glorious days of work done. Really got slipped right back into that zone. And I basically penciled up the whole second poster for the Of The Trees diptych for the upcoming shows at Red Rocks. So I'm very excited about that. And it is just so freaking sick it is just so it makes the first poster kind of look weak now so that's how juicy it is so far so that felt really good i always start to feel very weird and odd and off when i can't like evolve and explore through creativity even just for a week I start to feel very strange start to feel very disconnected from the primary source y'all that's what you need in your life is direct connection to that primary source I'm here bang at this antique talking to the art gods all day every day y'all and that's what keeps me tapped into that intuitive creative flow Oh, yeah. I'm hoping everybody's feeling good. I'm hoping everybody's finding their groove. I'm hoping y'all are getting your pencils out right now while you're listening to this video. Don't just stare at this beautiful face, right? Get down to business. Get this hype. Get this inspiration channeling directly into whatever you're doing right now. You know what I'm saying? Making love to your significant other. Put this video on. Just have it running in the background, y'all. Had a lot of people reaching out. Big shout out. Love it when people are like, 
Hey, so glad you're doing the videos again. So glad you're doing what you do. Keep doing what you do. You're really bringing a lot of inspiration and hype and motivation to me. I love that. That's what the name of this game is, y'all. I am here to have the most fun I can at the desk, to have the most fun I can in life, and to inspire y'all to do the same, right? That's been my goal since day one. I think as artists, as creative people, really truly as just creative animals in an infinite universe, as the beautiful, crazy, mysterious human beings we are, it is part of, it should be part of everyone's mission to inspire other people, inspire the people around them, inspire the people that they can reach through this magical <laughs> interworld communication system that we have, you know? Use this stuff to the fullest, you know? Are the thoughts in your head helping you or hurting you? Are you using the technology and all the resources in your life in ways that are helping you or hurting you? Helping yourself, helping others, right? Or hurting yourself and hurting others. What are you doing? What are you doing with all of this infinite possibility all around you? It's easy to get overwhelmed by technology. It's easy to, it's easy to get sucked in and get used by technology. But never forget, these things are here to evolve human creativity, to evolve human ingenuity. They are born out of that and they will continue to lead us on this path of creative evolution. So use it wisely, choose it wisely. Don't be scared of AI. Think about what you can do with it to forward your goals, human goals. My goal is to, one of my major goals is to increase the amount of imagination and creativity in the universe, right? especially here on this planet Earth. Oh, yeah, y'all. What are all those aliens thinking out there? What are they thinking? What are they doing? Why are they studying us? What do you think, y'all? Oh, I got this dusty old hat. This was kicking around in the shed. I brought it back in. Had a great weekend with the fam. Got the... Polaris Ranger crew back. We got everybody piled in, drove around, drove the morning through cool trails that are uh, down here by our house. In our own woods, of course. Then up the hill, there's a bunch of old cool trails you could drive through in the woods up there. Then we went over to the Vasa ATV trails here in our town and drove over one of the mountains here, drove into town and then did a loop back, had so much freaking fun, basically drove all day yesterday. Having the times of our lives, making really classic memories, making really fun memories, really epic memories with the fam. It's so good. It's so fun. This is, this is why we do it, y'all. Oh, ready to have a great week. Basically going to try to finish off this poster this week. Already actually started inking it on Friday a little bit. Going to blast some inks on this bad boy. Going to throw some color on it. Definitely easier riffing off of since it's a diptych. Jumping off of the first one. Challenging in a way of like how to make it fit but also make it different. Because, you know, I always want to come with something unexpected, right? Even to myself, right? So I'm sitting down, I'm doing this diptych. I know that the first part of the diptych, if you've seen the Of the Trees poster, it's the before. Where all these kind of aliens and mantises and, you know, forest creatures are hanging out. They're terraforming red rocks. They're basically like maybe creating red rocks. That's my theory. You know, I never really truly know what's going on in my work. I'm really channeling it, but... You know, I'm just sitting there and opening up to the possibilities beyond myself, right? That's, I think, the most important skill as an artist, as a creative person, as a human in general. I think whenever you're able to open your mind up to the possibilities beyond yourself and let the whole universe in and let the universe work through you, be Mother Nature's conduit to execute your purpose right execute the thing that 
you were uniquely put here to do. And it feels so good when you're on that beam. Locked in, focused, easy. I'm not, I won't say effortless because it takes effort, but the effort is more in the preparation, in making sure that I'm well rested, well hydrated, not distracted. That's all the effort. Once I'm sitting there and I'm at the desk and I've done that, it's easy, baby. I just let it flow. I just let that energy flow through my hand. It wasn't always that way. In the beginning, it would be more labor intensive, but it was because of I wasn't as good at the preparation. The preparation is really the key. You know, you can't control the outcome of a piece, right? But you can control how you prepare for your work and you can control how invested you are in the process, right? That's the not getting distracted, right? That's being in very inspired, being fully ready to sit there and, and, and put in the time, put in the focus and to also know for me to not let my conscious mind get in the way, to not let my conscious mind second guess it, to not start thinking about the business end of things while I'm working on the creative end of things, stuff like that, right? When I'm in that creative zone, when I'm in that creative flow state, I am really gone. I am not myself anymore. I am just a really, truly a pure energy conduit. And that's why I'm listening to some podcasts. That's why I'm listening to some music, listening to something to kind of take my conscious mind out of the picture and let my subconscious fully activate and just bubble up, right? We're taking that elevator down deep into that subconscious creative zone. And that's where we're living. And that's where we are able to, that's the true control center to access the information of the universe, the data of the universe, right? To let all that in. And then as it fills us up, to put it through our unique perspective, to put it through our unique filter, to show what the world looks and feels like from Ghost Shrimp's eyes, through Ghost Shrimp's brain, through Ghost Shrimp's hand, through Ghost Shrimp's experience on this, in this reality, on this plane of reality, right? And the more unique it is, the more personal it is to me, the way I interpret that, then the more it's going to stand out, the more impact it's going to make. And the more I allow myself to get lost in the process and, 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 and trust the process and then get so out there where I'm like, where am I? I don't know what's going on. Where am I? But I know something's out here. And then bang, make an amazing discovery of exploration. And then, oh my God, I didn't, ex I didn't expect to find this. Oh my God, this is amazing. I'm blowing my own mind. <laughs> And then you know you're onto something. And then you keep going further and further. And you and they're connecting. And you make two or three or four of those breakthrough moments. Oh my God, this is so cool. Oh my God, these unexpected narratives, the story beyond the story, right? When you're coming up with your sketch, with when you're doing your initial, when I'm doing my initial IDIs, I <laughs> idea uh, visualization of what the possibilities are ideation of what the project might be right my initial dreamlike impression of it i don't want to get too detailed into it i just want the initial hook the initial idea the initial nut of what we're doing right like the creative twist right like this it's like oh the aliens are terraforming boom right or not even, I think in the, I think in the sketch, it was just kind of aliens hanging out. They're all hanging out. There's the little cabin. Then as I'm exploring it, I'm getting the whole terraforming aspect. I'm getting the flowing of everything. The rocks are looking like they're flowing and they're molten. And, you know, I'm just moving things around and the mantises show up and there's different, you know, kind of electronic components to the landscape you know it's kind of a mix of organic and technologic which i'm super obsessed with right now because everything's organic right even technology is 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 organic in a way you know it's all natural it's all this is all it's like it's our beaver dam right like a beaver dam isn't not organic just because they took those resources and put them into a new form right we are doing the same thing with technology technology is our dam that we use to 
create our habitat, right? To create our habitat of weird wavelengths and, you know, <laughs> you know, Wi-Fi and all these different things that are going around that, that make us safe and able to function better in our world, right? So in the piece, I'm there, I'm exploring, I'm getting lost, I'm making fun discoveries. We discover that there's a portal in the middle of this piece and then, uh, you know, someone's coming out of the portal, right? Is it of the trees, right? Who's coming out of this portal? What are they doing here? What's going on? And then, of course, the vibes are all funky and flowy and, you know... There's the feel of the piece. There's the information that's encoded in the piece. There's the color vibes of the piece. There's so much to it. And it's really letting your intuition draw yourself through the piece. When I used to have a harder time, I would fight the piece. I would battle the piece. I would try to impose my will on the piece. But now I know to just prepare and show up and sit there and just let it flow through me. And it's like the opposite. I'm just helping the piece come to life. Because when I would battle the piece too, I would fight so hard to get to a certain point in the piece and I would get something that I felt good about and it would be good, but it wouldn't be great. And I would could feel that there'd be something great out there and it would make me a little anxious. I'd be like, oh, I know there's something beyond this, but, but, if, but I've worked so hard to get here. If I erase it, you know, in those days of erasing on paper, <laughs> if I erase it, I might not be able to find it again. I might not get it back. I mean, I think sometimes I might have even like snapped a picture of something to try to, to try to go back to it. That's like the old save and then revert or command Z, right? But then you do it enough times and you get brave enough. You get bold enough. You have seen the same territory enough where it could start to get boring and you go, you know what? I'm going to allow myself to let go of what is good and see what lies beyond to, to find that greatness beyond, right? And that's the levels, right? And once you get into that, mindset of 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 letting go of trusting the process of trusting the universe and letting your ish intuition pull you through your peace letting your intuition start to pull you through life start to pull you towards things and away from other things right once you can really get into that intuitional creative frame of mind create a frame of living and combining the two kind of starting to erase the lines between your work and your everyday life, right? Then you're really getting into that flow state. And now it's crazy. Even after those first three weeks of September that were so rough and I wasn't working, wasn't in the flow state at all, I sat down on Tuesday and bang, got right back into it. Wednesday, bang, made breakthroughs. Thursday, bang, made breakthroughs. Friday, bang, made breakthroughs. And I'm starting to ink it on Friday afternoon right? And that's pretty dang fast. Usually I'm letting it marinate a little bit more. Usually I'm needing to, usually I'm knowing there's more and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm letting it pull me through, right? That's the tricky tension when you're making a piece, especially for a client, especially on a deadline. I mean, the other thing is that I was supposed to have all this other, this most of the month to let this thing cook. And now it's like, oh my God, I got to get it done. It's already supposed to be done. So now I'm like, holy shit, I got to, speed up the process but that's the tension of knowing that you have to get something done in a certain time frame and knowing that you have to let the piece decide when it's done right so that's your job to be a good conduit being a good artist is really being a great conduit being, well, I'll say this, being a good artist, being a good artist is being a good conduit. Being a great artist is being a great conduit and figuring out what that means. Making sure the thoughts in your head are going to help your process, making sure the things that you're doing in your life are going to help your process, reinforce your process, right? When there's conflict, when it's a battle, that all shows up in the process. That all shows up on the paper, right? 
And you get to choose the battles. You get to choose what kind you have. If you're tired, if you're hungover every day, if you're distracted every day, if you're angry every day, if you're upset every day, if you're stressed, if you're anxious, right? And you're sitting there in your work and you're worried about your bills and you're worried about your friends, you're worried about this relationship, you're worried what this person said, you're worried about what's gonna happen later, what's gonna happen this weekend. You're texting, you're posting, you're doing all this other stuff. You're not being a good conduit, you're being a bad conduit you're gonna end up with a bad result, right? You're gonna end up with a subpar result. You're gonna end up with something that doesn't come close to your potential because you're disrespecting your potential, right? People that listen to me know that I hate to say like, be serious, right? Cause like, I don't know, <laughs> I'm never that serious, but you have to respect your potential, right? I can be, waking, bacon, you know, vibing out, joking around, living, you know, this alternative, unique, whatever lifestyle, but I take my crafts, I see, there we go again, I take it seriously, I respect my potential, right, I respect my potential, and I'm very professional in the way that I prepare, I very rarely am putting myself in a bad position when it's time to get to work, and if I have, I'm getting right back on it very quickly, right, I got a good night's sleep last night. I woke up 6 a.m., got a workout in today, getting hydrated, making this hype video, posting it up, getting it out there, getting some energy out into the universe, kicking my week off right, then turning this excitement and focus and energy, bang, right into the piece, right? Jump on that Inca today, right? This afternoon, switch gears, jump back into the puzzle, you know, get back into the puzzle, working on finishing the puzzle, right? Going to get a podcast going later this week. Are y'all excited about this podcast or what y'all? I'm very excited. I know it's the time to bring the podcast back for real. We doing it, right? I got to remember how to do the podcast. <laughs> the first one, maybe the first few will probably be solo or maybe actually I think we're going to get Wolfie on talking about our UFO because we always meant to do a little recording of the experience of seeing the craft in the sky together two years ago, May 1st. Um, very excited about that. But truly, you know, you really are taught so many things in school and in, in, if you go to art school or whatever, but honestly, the basics of preparation and being ready and being prepared, I think are lost on most people, especially with these, with these weird tropes and stereotypes about artists being depressed and miserable and antisocial and maybe, uh, uh, a victim to, uh, you know, um, uh, uh, drug abuse, you know, things like that, you know, bad relationships, you know, you think of to tortured artist, whatever that means, right? Cutting off your ear and, you know, all these weird tropes about artists and maybe they're just this odd outsider group of person. And yes, you know what? You are an outsider if you seek to be an artist, just because it is such an outsider thing. There's not a lot of people doing it, but in the same way that you know, being, becoming a professional athlete, you're really an outsider as well, right? You're an outlier. Maybe, maybe the, maybe the terminology rather than outsider is more outlier. Maybe to see yourself less as an outsider and more as an outlier and someone that is striving to do what a lot of people would love to do, but just don't have the confidence in themselves to chase it. Right or don't have the correct circumstances around their life to allow them to see that that's a possibility, right? And hopefully that's where we come in because we let you know that of course you can. Every kid draws, every kid hopefully draws, right? Every kid is creative. Kids are very uninhibited creatively. Somehow as an adult and we get, as we mature, as we grow older, we become much more inhibited. We become much more weighed down. We become much more tied in and hemmed in by the rules and the expectations uh, and the projections of mainstream reality. 
of the reality of our family, of the reality of our community, maybe of the reality of our religion that we're, that we're surrounded by, the reality of our state, of our country, of, you know, all these things that kind of you, you grow up in and start to set your boundaries by, right? How do you dissolve those boundaries, right? And this comes back to, are the thoughts in your head, are the things you believe, are they helping you feel good? Are they helping you feel confident? Are they helping you feel like you could do anything you wanted? Are they helping you feel like you have a purpose and that you can achieve it? Or are they tying you down? Are they limiting you? You know, you should really try to avoid anything in life that feels like it starts to limit you. Relationships that start to limit you. Thoughts that start to limit you. Ideas, expectations, projections, right? People can, I see it, I, I see it unfortunately more often than not, right? And if you're looking for a way uh, a, if you're looking for an oasis within this maze of reality, right, of consensus reality, of individual reality, of the tension between the two, consider signing up for the Goshram Classic Workshop. Allow me to, since this video is brought to you by me, allow me to plug the workshop that hopefully is starting in like, what, what's the date today? In... Uh, it would hopefully start in two weeks. It, it possibly could start in three weeks if we can fill it up. If not, it will start in the winter slot. We still only have four people signed up, which is unusual. Uh, we have 12 spots. That's the sweet spot. It, it's really the group dynamic. It's really the group dynamic that creates the the that makes the workshop dynamic right that really makes it where everybody's getting inspired by everybody else i'm the engine that makes it go i'm making weekly hype videos i'm i'm getting everybody excited it's personally tailored to that group in the workshop and of course there's one-on-one -on -one vid chats with me every week and we have periodic group chats as well you know there's two or three group chats mixed in there and usually the Workshoppers themselves organize like a work night, you know, a vid hang uh, where like once a week or whatever, they will all just kind of get in there and kind of work on their pieces together, which is really cool. Uh, of course, we've got an alumni slack for the workshop as well. When you're out of it, there is an alumni. Actually, it's not a slack anymore. It's now a discord. So if anybody, if any workshop alumni, there's what, 115, 120 of you, of you out there. If anybody's not in the group Discord, uh, hit me up or hit someone else up in the workshop because they are probably in it. I'd say probably about half the people that have taken the workshop are in there. Maybe there's like maybe 60 or 70 people that are in there. Maybe I'm wrong. I'm not a huge online guy, you know, beyond, you know, the, the workshop and stuff like that. I don't really like chill in chat rooms a whole lot, but just because I'm always, you know, get, staying focused. But, uh... It's, uh, you know, we got the weekly assignments going and really you are creating a vision, right? The, 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 the warm up assignment, the pregame assignment to the workshop is write a dopest life manifesto, create a vision of your dream life, right? Forget all the rules, forget all the parameters, go back to when you were a kid, go back to when you were a teenager, whenever you were most idealistic about dreaming about the limitless possibilities of life. Hopefully, you're privileged and lucky enough and, and situated well enough to at some point have a big dream about you, what you were able, what, what you would be able to do in this life. Uh, this, this beautiful, magical, precious existence, right? And go back to that place and dream and daydream and 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 allow your mind to spin out and think of all the most amazing things and don't worry about it being practical right because then once you're in the workshop we're gonna start to really kick those ideas around you're gonna start to put those ideas into your work right that's where that personal mythology comes in mixing that dream life that dream reality with that creative reality right we are really working a magical spell we are magicians, right? We are wizards, right? And we are 
working a magic spell. And the reason we get the group together is because it's when you work the magic together as a group, it is exponentially more powerful. And people that have been in the workshop can attest to this, right? And if you've ever had a, a great friend group or a, or a great collect art collective or a great band where all of a sudden you're getting together and at that time the energy is just so great and it's just so amazing and much bigger than any of you could be on your own right that's the environment we create in the workshop people become lifelong friends in the workshop people end up visiting the ghost Troop national forest sometimes for you know ghost scouts or ghost fest or just to visit and say hi Right. This is really about more than a workshop. This is about intertwining people's creative destinies from all over the globe. When I do it, I do it deep. I do it big. I'm a big picture guy. Right. We're not just here to go, oh, it'd be fun to do a workshop. Right. I never thought I'd be doing something like a workshop. Right. I don't think of myself as a teacher. I think of myself as a powerful visual artist in the prime of his career, in the prime of his dream life feeling so grateful, feeling so thankful to be here, feeling so privileged to be here that it is my absolute honor and duty to turn around and be a stepping stone on the path, to be a rung on the ladder, to be a, 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 a coach in your corner that is helping you do the same, right? There were people that helped me see the light Help me achieve my dreams. Help me go beyond anything I ever could have accomplished in this life, right? Far beyond, double, triple what I ever thought would have happened. Surrounded by work that I never even dreamed I could possibly make, right? A simple kid from the sticks of New England of a town of 1,700 people. Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, 01072, 29 Baker Road. Right, two five nine one two six one. Son, coming from the sticks to being a globally infamous visual artist. Right, you can do the same thing if you respect your potential. You want to come into this little oasis and overlap with the ghost shrimp universe with the ghost shrimp energy become a spoke on that wheel on that gear in the ghost shrimp universe in the ever-expanding ghost shrimp multiverse with all the connections that that leads to with all the friendships right most people that come into the workshop they go i've, I've never been able to have this many creative friends before right maybe they've never been in a in, in, in art school or have a lot of professional art friends, right? I'm spoiled in that way. Got to go to art school at Pratt. Got a great community that I'm still connected with there. And then went on to get a great community of friends in the art world, in the indie comic world, in the Cartoon Network world, you know, in the illustration world, in all these different worlds. And then creating the workshop world and the Ghost Scout world and all these things, right? It is about having that full vibrant life as a creative animal in an infinite universe y'all so if you would like to overlap in that quest in that mission hit me up sign up for the workshop today we'll see if we can get it going in october if we don't get it going in october we will absolutely get it going in the winter slot we will just we have right now we have a fall workshop and a winter workshop planned as usual if we don't fill this fall spot in time, round 15 in the fall will just become the winter spot. And round 16 will just be pushed to the springtime. So that's how we'll do it. And who knows, maybe we'll switch the, if there's enough alumni to do a Magnum Dopus workshop in the springtime, maybe we'll do that. So let's see, I'm always open, y'all. Maybe we'll do a hybrid one. I always love new things. So I'm always open, y'all. Let the universe work through me. There's a little juicy shrimp for breakfast, y'all. Don't forget, you can support your boy by going over to GhostShrimpGlobal.com. And we got the links to get the Lost Forest Adult Coloring Book at Walmart, at Target, on Amazon, at Barnes & Noble. Um, all the fine retailers. You're going to love it. It's going to mean so much to me. Pick up a couple copies. Give one to a friend. The holidays are just around the corner, y'all. I know y'all want to buy a batch of these Lost Forest Coloring Books the greatest coloring book in the world. I am now officially working on the sequel, on the second book in the series, y'all. It's going to be even better. You're going to love it. You're not going to want to miss out on this one.
So grab it, share it, fucking color it up, send me the pictures so we can post it. And of course, you can hit up the website and get the merch. We got all the Gosher merch up in there. That also really helps your boy out. Gives me a little boost. Puts a little more money in the bank to keep me cooking, keep me doing what I'm doing. Head on over to the Patreon. I think it's just Patreon backslash Go Shrimp uh, for the podcast. The podcast is coming back. New episode on Saturday. I'm going to be doing a Shrimp and Breakfast Monday. I'm going to hit another one Wednesday. I'm going to maybe hit another one Friday. And then we'll be dropping the pod on Saturday. I'm thinking that might be the schedule. Let's see how it goes. Uh, podcast on Saturday on the Patreon. Um, and then uh, if we do post it out public like last time, it would be Monday. Um, I might keep some of them just to the Patreon at first, just to kind of get people getting back into that Patreon. So salute to all the people. Almost everybody stayed on the Patreon while we've been on a long hiatus. I think it's coming up on like, is it three years or is it even more? I don't even know. I think it's I think it's been like two and a half years maybe because it was around April that we stopped right when the pandemic really started to hit and the kids came home and I kind of lost my ability to just have peace and quiet and do the pod. So, but we are going to come back. We are going to make it work. We are going to build it up, y'all, because it's a big part of the plan of my brand to continue to get my voice out there through the podcast, continue to get my voice out there, my face, my beautiful face out here through these uh, shrimp for breakfast videos, um, these R-A-M-A's, ask me questions. I still have some more good ones. My boy Caleb asked a juicy question about my three-year plan, which I definitely need to update, but let's get on here and kick it around and talk about three-year plans because that's a huge part of the workshop. Oh yeah, that's one of the points I forgot to make is, through the workshop, we kick around that idea of the vision. And then at the end of the workshop, you break down your vision into a three-year plan where the first year you break down your goals into monthly sections. The second year, you break it into quarterly sections, four segments. And then the third year, you break it into halves. You break it into biannual segments. And then you sit down each week, look at your monthly goals, go forward you know, and you keep projecting out. Once you get to the end of that first year, bang, project that monthly breakdown into that second year. Take that quarterly breakdown, put it into a monthly breakdown, right? Same thing with that third year. Take it into a biannual breakdown, break it into a quarterly breakdown. Very simple system just to kind of create a vision of your life. Put it into a little bit of a plan so that you're really kind of engaging destiny there. And then that's just the kind of plan A. And of course, humans plan, mother nature laughs, you know, you're going to have to, you know, bob and weave and, 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 and duck and dive and overcome this challenge. And, you know, just like this last September when I was poised and ready to finish the puzzle uh, finish this poster and then, you know, start my book with a, with a clean desk. Nope. Now all three projects are overlapping. Everything is overlapping, but you know what? I'm a 20 year, 21 year veteran and I've seen it all y'all. I'm staying cool as a cucumber. I know as long as I stay prepared, I know as long as I sit down at this desk and I am focused and ready to go that I will get the work done and everybody will be happy and they will become legendary projects. Sometimes the ones that take the longest and are delayed the most, make the most impact y'all just like this raw poster took a year bang one of my most legendary pieces so you know this puzzle that's been sitting on my desk for two and a half years is gonna be absolutely insane can't wait to get it to you we are really pushing the limits of these half hours y'all we going out 40 minutes in this juicy this is practically turning into a shrimp for brunch y'all there we go i think we got it all in salute to my cousins, to my alumni, to my Ghost Scouts all around the world, to all my creative cousins revolving around and traversing this flat, hollow, hologram multiverse, y'all. Watch out for the aliens. Keep your mind open. And remember, you have more in common with every living entity on this planet than you have in conflict, y'all. Bang! Shrimp for breakfast. Let's go!